guys. It's 9-12 in the morning on a Monday. One second. Okay, I'm back, and you can't really see me. But, yeah, I had to come off on because I seen something. Yo, it's dark. And I don't want to. Hold on. I hate doing that. I do. I really, really do. But, yeah, it's going to. Camera gonna fall over. It's so crooked, but it's like no nothing I could do. Uh, I could put it like that. But good morning, y'all. It's nine in the morning. I woke up at eight and stuff. I was supposed to just wake up at nine, so I went to sleep at like two o'clock because I was doing some work for my internship. And, you know, I was confused on what to do because it, it was not more so I was confused on what to do. It was more so of I was supposed to do the assignments and then turn them in. Turn them in where? Like, take pictures of proof that I did it and send it in email? I was not going to do that. So I emailed the person. But something is wrong with the email. I've been sending emails and they've been bouncing back. Like I sent my time sheets in that's supposed to be signed for my school, for my class, and it was bounced back. So I'm confused on why it's bouncing back. And I need to look that up. Is it the fact that they blocked my email from sending shit in or what? But what I do know is that them time, them time sheets gotta be signed because it's midterms and them shits need to, it's for midterms. Like, that counts as a grade. Bugging. But I even, uh, I'm like, you know what? Maybe it's me on my side. So I'm gonna send the email in anyway. Bounce back. I sent that in the second time. I said, I don't know what's going on with the email. Maybe it's something wrong on my side, but I'm gonna still send it just in case you get it. Should bounce back again. So I'm like, maybe it's because I'm adding a lot of stuff to the email. Adding mad, like, six attachments of files and whatnot. Let me let me send some some little two sentences, three sentences email. Send that and that shit bounce back too. So I'm like, you know what? Hey, I'm gonna bring the binder as proof that I did it. But I was emailing all week, all weekend that I was doing this. But there's something left that I gotta do. There's an examples of how to um you know go about like reading the symptoms of what a child is going through and what um, mental health issues that they have and stuff. So now I gotta just do the rest of the goals and treatment plans. And I'm about to ask another girl who and who interns at the same place with me. Can I use that to do that? Because. Quite frankly, I'm confused, and I do not want to hear nobody's mouth talk about some. Well, you should ask if you didn't know how to do it. Baby, you you so condescending when you're talking to me. I'm not going to ask you nothing. I'm going to do that shit. If it's wrong, it's wrong. No, the fuck to tell you, bro. I'm eating a breakfast burrito. Yeah, I know about reorders and stuff. Being at the guy from Walmart on Friday. What you call it? Either drop my stuff or somewhere else. <laughs> my sister updated her phone and the new update got her got her freaking out. And she thought she lost her passwords. And it just gives us a whole app full of passwords. <laughs> She's so funny. What the fuck is Pinterest? So oh. You telling me I gotta change the password? Don't you think we should invent something? What the fudge? Happy. Oh. Well, no. It kinda all sound the same. Sure. Okay, I see. Well, I don't need this anymore. Because yes. yeah. I know you'd like it. You know, I've always had 
I gotta change some of these pads because they look the same. Man, fuck all that. I definitely gotta change this one. Yeah. Right now, it's gonna be six. Oh. We use password. Okay. Oh. I gotta sneeze, y'all. Oh, yeah, definitely gotta change that, too. Can't have the same password. Oh, yeah, definitely gotta change that one. But, how y'all doing on this nice, lovely Monday morning? It's Christopher Columbus Day. It's Columbus Day, but Christopher Columbus. For my indigenous people. I think that's for the solidarity. <laughs> yeah. Oh! I forgot to tell y'all. So y'all know already that I'm done with my internship, right? So Wednesdays and Thursdays, what I was doing in my previous videos last year, previous videos last year, my videos last year around this time, I would work with students with intellectual disability, the young adults around the same age as me, but they intellect, they have intellectual disabilities. Some of them are autistic. TV is frozen. But Wednesdays and Thursdays, I'll be starting back with them. And, you know, they would come and go to their um, job placements. And I came up with the whole schedule. So I'm going to be doing counseling sessions with them now. Own counseling sessions with them. Wednesdays and Thursdays. And, but some of them, we're going to have them come to campus more so they could do their, like, um, I forgot what it was. My, so they, so it's, it's more like a, um. I think I think a couple of students, but I'm a read. I came up with a schedule and I'm gonna read it to y'all. The daily schedule is ten o'clock because they come. They used to come at ten thirty, and then don't. But they only was here from ten thirty to two, and it just they just went for their job sites and then they went to get lunch and they came back and we just sat around. But they come in earlier this time, so ten a.m. to ten fifteen they come and they check in with me. And then at the main office, 10.15 to 10.20, they transition to their job sites. And then from 10.20 to 12.30, they go to the job site assignments, different job sites on campus. And then 12.30 p.m. is transition to lunch. And then from 12.30 to 1.15 is lunch break, which is the cafeteria or the area that they usually sit in for lunch. And then 1.15 to 1.20, they return back to the office that they came to check in at. And then 1.20 to 2 p.m., we got group sessions. So we're going to start off with the group session. You know, as most of the kids, they know each other. I, most of the students, they know each other and stuff. So they've been with each other for five years now. So we're going to do a group session because, you know, they had a long time to get their stuff situated to come back. They were supposed to be graduating out of the program, but some of them stay and stuff like that. Um, so they're going to just talk about what they did over the summer, you know, things of that nature. You know, what usually goes on during a group session. I won't be doing a group session. I will be doing the individual therapy sessions, the individual counseling sessions. The other intern, other um, person we have, he will be running the group sessions. So, and then, because, the, so the first time Wednesday, we're going to do the group session. Um, and then Thursday, we might start the individual group sessions and so on and so forth and then you know 2 p.m to 2 p.m is dismissal so 205 to 2 30 dismissal time in the office so that's what it is it looks better but the only thing that makes your mind clutter That is messed up. It's the photo album. Yeah, my sister don't like the photo album. She was like, it got my photo album on messed up. I said, a lot of people don't like the way uh, the new update has the photos. I'm fine with it. I mean, it's just photos. What could, like, it don't really bother me. I mean, you know, people don't like change and stuff like that. And I get that. But 
I got this fake, um, nah, I don't want to say. <laughs> well, on TikTok, this uh, page, follow me, Aaron Pierre. Y'all know who that might be is. Who that might be is. He just played in that new movie that came out in September, Rebel Ridge. But I loved, yo, it's mad dark. But I love him as, um, he played Malcolm X in the Genius series, um, Martin Luther King slash X. Uh, what's his name? Um, what's his name? What's the other game? What's the other guy's name? Um, oh, I forgot his name. Oh, gee. Because they both about to play in the new um, uh, Mufasa, the Lion, the Lion King. Kelvin. Kelvin. His name is Kelvin. He played Malcolm X. They did a terrific job, bro. And it's like, you know, already, you already know Malcolm, Malcolm X had this very distinctive look. And I feel like he already, he already was licensed, so he was a redhead. But I feel like Aaron Pierre, out of all the people that played Malcolm X, he looked like Malcolm X closely the most. Denzel Washington, come on, man. That was a dark skin, man. Denzel was dark skin. Malcolm X was light. But I get it. It's Denzel. He, he know how to connect and go into... He had he already played who he played in his lifetime. He played Malcolm X. He played Frank Lucas. I think he played Frank Lucas. And what was that movie? What was that? Yeah, what was that movie? When T.I. Common, all of Idris Elba. Frank Lucas. I think it was Frank Lucas. But let me go ahead and eat my breakfast burrito. Something's wrong with my TV. I need to watch some TV. And I'm closing these blinds. It's too. I, and I don't. I don't feel comfortable with my back being turned and the blinds is open and the TV. I don't like that. And I ain't turned on no damn um, light. So let me go back here. It's about to get dark. I have a light right here. A lamp. I'm going to have to hold the camera like this in order for y'all to see me. <laughs> but yeah. Yesterday, I was supposed to be giving y'all First of all, this weekend, I was supposed to be giving y'all two, two videos of me answering questions. I was supposed to answer these relationship, 25 relationship type questions in my perspective. Yeah, didn't do that. I've got the questions and the answers. I don't, and I was only going to do it because my roommate is not here and I don't usually get my room to myself because she's always here, just like me always being here. And that's not an issue. I mean, her being here don't bother me. I mean, I watch my TV, I come and do my work, and I go to sleep, and I wake up and do the same thing over. But, yeah. But I, the thing is, I keep asking for a, a single, and they keep telling me I'm going to get a single, and they don't give me a single. Or even, I'm a vibe. I'm not going to say nothing further. But, yeah. I tried to flat iron my hair yesterday. It, yeah, you could tell I flat ironed the hair, but you could also tell the hair ain't straight. So the hair is straight at the roots, but at the ends, it's fuzzy as a motherfucker. So, yeah. I'm finna call my mom. It's 9.30. She ain't go to the senior center today because it's Christopher Columbus Day. Stop saying Christopher Columbus. It's Columbus Day. It's a holiday. Why would you be going to the senior center on a holiday? Unless they don't celebrate that white man day. Mm. But mm, let me go ahead and eat this thing and drink a protein shake. Peace out. Y'all, I just had a thought. And, like, I'm so excited because... Well, it's, I would say it's, it's October 14th. Yeah, it's October 14th. But, you know, next month is, next month is Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thanksgiving is here. It's, I'm not, I'm not hungry. I've been eating well. I've been eating well. I've been eating more than I usually do when I come to school. And when I come to school, I don't usually eat breakfast. So I've been eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's why I've been, you know, go grocery shopping so I could buy me some breakfast burritos and stuff of that nature. I wish the freezer was 
the freezer was bigger so it could hold more food. Like, I wish it had, like, a, a, a you know, um, if I had, like, if I, if I invested in, like, a little mini deep freezer where I could just take my stuff out and put it in the freezer so I won't have to worry about, you know, me having all the space and then my roommate getting food and there's no food in the free, there's no space in the freezer for her to put her food. Like, that just doesn't make any sense. If I would still have my goddamn refrigerator, I'd be fine. My, my, um, my refrigerator would be right there. Right freaking there. But yeah, that's neither here nor there. That's not why I came on here and said I was excited. December is coming up. Like, I feel like this year is a little bit different than it was last year. Like, I'm excited to go home for the winter break. And I hope it's snow, and I hope, like, it, it, it'll feel like home. You get what I'm trying to say? Like, you know how New York is. You know the, the TV shows of how New York is during the winter time. I hope we get some snow so it could, like, literally be a marshmallow world in the winter when the snow seems to cover the ground. If you know, you know where that song is from. If you don't know, that's Chitty Girls. I just can't wait for Thanksgiving, like not Thanksgiving, November to start, cause once November first come, Christmas music. I don't want a lot for Christmas. There is just one thing I need, and I don't care about the presents underneath the Christmas tree. I just wanna hang my stocking there upon the fireplace. That's or I know. But as I was saying, I'm kind of excited. I feel like this Thanksgiving and this Christmas will be like, you know, it will feel like home this year. Didn't feel like home last year. The only thing is I wish my mom was home because she don't live in New York no more. She moved to New Jersey. Yeah. But it's cool. She don't let your train right away. And then, you know, we have a whole month off. So, let me see. Because usually, it was October. I think like November 5th is like the last day with the students. And then, um, after November 5th, I'm taking myself home. I'm going to be home two weeks early. Yep. Yep. I'm... I need to get back that stuff from Good Molecule because my face was clearing up. Once I just feel like once the hair grows, they be like, just let the hair grow. Who is letting the hair grow? I'm not walking around with no fucking beard. No. No beard. I don't get no mustache. But I'm not walk about walking around with no beard and no whiskers. I get my head grows on my cheek too. See, y'all can see it. And my pores are open on this one. Like my pore open on this side. But yeah. Oh, oh gosh. I'm tired. I don't ever go to sleep past one o'clock. Like. Not even tw I don't even go to sleep past 12. I might go to sleep at 1 if I got nothing to do. But I will always make sure I get my 8 hours of sleep. I only had 7. You know what? I'm going to go on campus. And I'm going to go see the lady. Yeah. I'm like, I got to tell you something. She requested me for work study even after I told her I was going to work with you. I hope I'm able to do work study in that other job at the same time. Money, 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 money. Christmas is almost here. So trying to make as much as money to get presents. Oh my Jesus. And I need to get box sprays, bro. 
Hey, when I get home, I want to get them boho box braids. You pick up the hair, and I just pay you. My hair is brown. Yeah, it's 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 brown. Yeah,
that it's going to be hard to take that man down. But they, but she was like, okay, I just want, I want y'all. She was like, is he going to know? I'm like, well, if there's more information to find out and it's worth investigating, unfortunately, he will have to be notified. And then she's like, you know what? It's okay. I just wanted to to let y'all know if y'all could do, if y'all could try, can y'all keep this on the hush? Don't tell nobody. Okay, cool. And then, you know, the next day, that's when she went home. She went to her childhood bedroom and she tore the room up because as soon as she went in her room, she remembered everything from that night and stuff. And lucky enough, she still had the yellow nightgown. So not only is the journal that she found with the page written on what was done to her, she also still had the nightgown. Now, they took the nightgown and they found pre-ejaculation. And then, so the judge came in the next day and his defense was he was writing a book. You writing a book about a, a eight year old girl, a eight year old girl in a yellow nightgown where you kissed her on her private part. A grown man kissed the eight year old girl on her private part. She was asleep. So you put your hand there and kept wandering. And his defense was he was writing a book. So you writing a book on sexually assaulting an eight year old. And they was like, and then the, the, the attorney was like, yeah, the inspiration was Lolita. The fucking movie Lolita with the girl who's being groomed by the adult. The 14 year old girl being groomed by the adult. What time is it? What time is it? 10 or 3. Okay, it's 10 or 3. I got time before I start getting dressed to go to the cab to eat lunch. But that was the inspiration. I was like, this man is sick. Like, he's sick. And then it's the fact that he's up there saying she's lying. Like, I didn't do that. When, in fact, he did it. And you know what was even worse? The mother. The mother was like... <laughs> like, I just... The mother literally served her daughter up on a platter and gave her to her fucking husband. Mind you, this is the daughter that they do not share together. The, this is, um, Maggie has two younger siblings. The two younger siblings is by the stepdad. Maggie is the stepdaughter. And that's why it was so weird because he mentioned in the book, he mentioned in the journal that the eight-year-old girl was a stepdaughter. So who the fuck else you writing about? And then he gonna say, then he gonna go say, um, um, he using the cases that he, uh, you know, solved as a judge in real life. So you got inspiration to use. So you use the cases that you were solving and putting away bad people and thought to write a journal out of that. I write a book out of that. Mind you, on a stand, they said to him, so... You was writing a book, right? Did you write another chapter? No. Did you write another paragraph? No. Did you write an outline for the book? No. So how are you writing a book? And then, like, you're not writing a book. Like, you're just sitting up here lying and trying to get away with the fact that you sexually abused your wife's daughter. And then the wife was even worse. She went up on that stand and she lied. And was like... And then... Because the first of all, the mother was a fucking pediatrician. She's a doctor herself. And they found a... Um, they found a... What you call it? Because the, what the thing was... So Maggie said... Maggie said that she confronted... No, she didn't say she confronted him. She read the pages and stuff of the book, and she didn't remember. But when she went in her room, she remembered the whole night clearly. She was like, she woke up to him standing by her bed, and 
she was like, why are you in here? And he was like, you wet the bed. So he took off her nightgown. But then she was like, I felt the nightgown and I felt and I felt the mattress and it wasn't wet. Then so he lied. That's what she remember from that night vividly. Tulsa King. Y'all go watch Tulsa King. It's on Paramount Plus. That's what slide. But yeah, that's what she remembers. So on the stand. On the stand, um, you know, the mother was lying. And then the son, the youngest son, he left. And then, you know, uh, the, the the other sergeant, the uh, detective, they went and it was like, why, like, why did you leave? You know you could tell us the truth, right? He was like, my mother um, lied. She went up on that stand and lied because I remember seeing my dad come in and out of my sister's um, room. And I asked my mom, why does he keep coming out of her room? And she told, she told him, you're just imagining things. Like, your son is seeing his father come out of his sister's room and you telling him he's seeing things? You allowed for your child to be sexually assaulted by your husband. Now, here it is part. So, they found a, a, what you call it? You know when you go, you got your own file at the doctor's office. So, they found a file of Maggie's at her mom's office and she was, what you call it? Um, check, she had a checkup, but then some part of her labor, you know, when kids are sexually abused and something, and some bonus teared, that's what was proof that she was being sexually abused. And the mother goes, she asked the husband, and he lied at first, but then he told the truth, and she told him to write it down in detail what he did in the journal. And they was like, and that's it? And then all in her mind, she was like, and then be left alone with three kids? Bitch. So you would stay with a man who sexually abused your child instead of protecting your child? And then she had the nerve to say, you don't understand. Maggie has always been attention-seeking. She, she has a, a seduction thing to her. She seduced him. And Olivia was like, are you saying that your eight-year-old seduced your husband? Like, it, it baffled me that the mother was really taken up for the husband and just basically trashing her daughter. And she was like, she always had issues. You don't think the issues started because you allowed her to be sexually abused and then you're, you're literally not protecting your child. You're talking about your child as if she deserved to be sexually abused by your husband. And then you said, well, well I, told him, I told him not to do it no more. I told him not to do it no more. It's crazy. And I'm like, and I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, there's so many women in this world who are just like that. And it will even goes to the uh, extreme as to unaliving their kids in order to save the men in them lives. Like, self-centered women are very dangerous. Like, male-driven women are very dangerous. That that happened. That was a case. These two girls, they went, I, I'm not sure if they went to Clark Atlanta or something like that. They were roommates. And one of the roommates, I think they were, like, best friends. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't know if they were best friends, but I'm sure they was friends. But I knew they were, I, I know the case was they were roommates. And the roommate, her boyfriend, I think she sexually assaulted the other roommate. And she told her. And instead of having her roommates back, she went with the boyfriend to kill the other roommate. And then they was looking for her and found out she was dead. So now she in jail, life, life in prison, with a man, o over a man. He sexually abused your roommate or tried to make, make um, you know, cat calls to your roommate and you... Kill your roommate over a man. Self-centered women and male-driven women are very dangerous to be around. Very fucking dangerous. They don't think about nobody else but the man. They figure out a way to make another woman look bad in order for a man to look at them, to laugh with them, to pick them, to choose them. Pick me, women. Pick me. Me women. 
was giving Meredith, pick me, choose me, love me. Like, bitch, is you crazy? You need to go see the lady and you need to figure out why you acting the way you do over a man. And once the men figure out a woman will do that for them, they will make that, never mind what they'll make the woman do. What they'll do to the woman, the woman will be like, it like it look like Jesus to the woman, like oh my goodness, like it really baffled me how there's women like that in the world that will literally serve their children up on a platter and just give it give them to the man. There's so many cases like that. Like, uh, one case, the Shania Davis case. Her mother literally sold her, sold her. The next Marie case happened when I was a fucking kid. She allowed. She took part in it. She allowed for, I don't know if it was the stepfather, stepfather or the boyfriend to abuse her daughter. Her daughter, you know, the next Marie case, if you want to look it up, it happened in like 2005. If she was still alive, she'd be the same age as me, 26. It shook the whole fucking New York. And she went, she went to the school like two blocks away from my house. So it was a very big case. And I just want to say the system... The social social services system failed because she was not supposed to be in that house. And they freaking, what you call it? Um, what they did? Ever since she came to school with so many bruises on her body. And they reported, re kept reporting, and they did not do anything. That did not, absolutely did not. They did not do their jobs. And, I'm, and, I, and I think, and I'm not, pre if I'm not mistaken, I think, the people that was involved in that case got fired because the mother, the, the, the people in that house was reported and they did absolutely nothing when it came to her. And unfortunately, she lost her life. The things they did to her, the things that they did to her. Like, I don't understand women like that. I really do not understand. Like, you hate your kids that much that you literally give them to men to sexually abuse them, physically abuse them. Like, like, oh my gosh. That case was so crazy. That case on SVU was so crazy. And then towards the end, when they finally realized the stepfather was lying, and the federal judge, he was a federal judge. They, they sent him to jail. And and he started crying. He was like, he made one mistake. I'm like, so you sit up on this damn, damn chair all the time listening to cases like this. And you decided to still sexually abuse your wife's child. And you talking about you, you made one mistake in your life. That wasn't a mistake. That was a choice. You chose to go into that girl's room and, and touch her inappropriately because you 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 knew you was a man of power you was beloved and nobody was going to put you down so i'm back in my room and i just have to say i just got off the shuttle right no when i was on the shuttle right the radio was playing and remember how i said today is columbus day and we don't really celebrate Columbus Day because of what Christopher Columbus did. And earlier in my vlog, I said indigenous. Indigenous. You remember when I, pron I pronounced the word wrong? Indigenous. It's indigenous. I knew that. I literally pronounced the word how it was spelled. My dumb ass. Now I'm smart. I just had a dumb moment. Indigenous. <laughs> like I was really on the shuttle listening to the radio when I and when and then I had my headphones in. So when I was listening, I wasn't really playing nothing. So I heard it and I'm like, indigenous. Why did I say the other word? Just a dumb moment all around. But yeah. I just got back from the calf. I'm laying here like I'm not supposed to be doing any like I'm not supposed to be doing something, but I'm not doing it. I got to take the garbage to the garbage room. And that's another thing. This is why I don't want a roommate. 
because if the garbage bag is full and you're putting stuff in the garbage, the last person to put stuff in the garbage and makes the garbage bag full should take it to the garbage room, no? And on top of that, the bowl is in the sink. Now, the bowl was in the sink, a pan was in the sink, knives and forks, and my water bottle was in the sink, right? And the bowl, not the bowl is not mine. So all of that was in the sink. So I finally got dishwashing soap, right? So I washed the dishes and I put the stuff up, right? So common sense would tell you, get you some dishwashing soap so you can wash your dish when you know you gotta make noodles when you get hungry. But you know, I got dishwashing soap and you assume that because I got dishwashing soap, whenever you got a dish in the sink, I'm gonna wash it because I got dishwashing soap. That's not how that works. And the thing is, if you wash the dish the first time, they're gonna always think you're gonna wash the dish. Right? So you wash the dish one time and you leave the shit in the, in the sink and you wash what's yours. Because if I keep washing the dishes, that means you're gonna keep thinking you're gonna eat stuff, make dishes and you're not finna wash them. And I'm not leaving my dish soap there. So every single time you get stuff and put it in the sink, you can use it up. I know this is your first time here at this school and on campus and sharing the room. But you grown now, you up age now to know. That's not how shit works. I mean, it don't work like that at home. I mean, I mean, unless you got a family that like to clean up after you. I grew up in a family that was strict. You clean up after yourself. So, if it's mine, I clean it up. What, we, what I need is a goddamn broom and a mop because I've been blowing my hair out and the hair is all over the place. But I've been trying to um, get tissue, the paper towel, and um, pick it up off the floor. Or at least move it to one side so that when I finally do get a broom... I can sweep it up. Yeah. I'm not, I feel like I want to take a freaking nap. That's what I want to do. Just go like this. Do y'all sleep with your mouths open? I will sleep with my mouth open. Like, I got to be really tired to do that. Like, I don't drool in my sleep at all. I don't make noise. Or I don't snore. Depending on how exhausted I am and how tired I really am, sometimes I may talk in my sleep. Like if I go, if I stay up all night and I don't go to sleep, let's say if I stay up for 20 hours and I'm exhausted and I go out and I have a ball of energy, because I could go to sleep, I could stay up all night and only have one hour of sleep and still have energy. I could do that. I drink a lot of water, you know, I nourish my body where I could do stuff like that. I used to do it all the time, especially, no, that was, I mean, during the pandemic, you really didn't have nothing to do. You just went to the cab, got your food. Pandemic was different. I used to stay, well, my classes was online too. I used to stay up all night, maybe like six o'clock doing work. I used to wait last minute to do work too, right? I had an English, I'm off topic, but I had an English class and... In the English class, we were supposed to be doing journals and stuff, at least 25 of them. And I didn't really look at the syllabus until later on. <laughs> until, like, I think maybe two weeks before the semester was due, before when the journals was due. And we was talking about it in class. And it was like, yeah, the journals is due by this time. So I used to stay up all night. I stayed up, I think, for, like, I think three or four days straight just creating journals just creating journals I found a show to watch I put it on the TV watching the show doing the work all of it the whole nine I think that semester had got a 3.8 3.8 or 3.7 one of those 3.6 and then the grades be taking so long to come back. I think that was the spring semester. So when I got home, 
and I was waiting for my grade. No, that was the fall semester. When I got home, yeah, that was because that was in November. When I got home, I was waiting for my grades and stuff. I looked at that thing. It said three, three point six. I'm like 3.8. It was 3.8 because I was close to getting a 4.0. 3.8 I was like, excuse me, 3. Point who? I was screaming, Ma, I got a 3.8. Because, like, I always, like, I struggled with school. I, was, I wasn't I was an A student. I was, like, a, 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 B, a C, B plus student. Like, 80, 80-something 80 average. 86 and up. Maybe, like, 82 and up. I wasn't, I wasn't an A student, but, you know, it wasn't that bad in school. But I was struggling in school. And stuff like that, but it was like, yeah. So when I got the when I got to college, I mean, my first year of college, it was, yeah. I feel like when you coming in, I feel like this is what I'm gonna say. I seen this on Twitter, and I had to agree. I feel like, I mean, it works for some people, and it don't work for others. I feel like going to college in your twenties is way better, for, way better for you than going to college straight out of high school. Cause you still got the mentality of a teenager while in college and you're trying to focus on having f more classes, especially in cause freshman year. Well, because of the pandemic now people might have online classes, but before online classes were a thing, like really my freshman year of college was 2017. So imagine being in a team mentality and going to classes and then remember, high school was very different. You was able to wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning and get to school by 8.15. At 8.15 class in high school. And then you be in school from 8.15 all the way to 3. You in school all day. Whereas in college, you get to, you got, it's not classes all day. You might have class at 8 o'clock in the morning. 8 o'clock class in college is way different than having to be to school at 8.15. I don't know how, but it's very different. And then it don't even last that long. Well, it don't last that long in school either. I don't even remember the time periods in school. I know I had an eight. I had a um, early schedule, so I started at eight fifteen. I ended school at one the fall semester, spring semester. I started school later. I started school around like fifth period, and then I left school later, only like three o'clock. But that's neither here nor there. But you will have an eight o'clock class from eight eight literally eight o'clock to eight fifty. Fifty minutes. Fifty fifty minutes. And then you'll go back to your room and then you got a class at ten. And then you might have two back to back classes. I mean some people were smart enough to have their classes back to back to back. So they will have three classes back to back. So ten, eleven, twelve, straight. Going to class and then they off. So nine o'clock they will go breakfast and then class class class. That was smart. My freshman year of college, it was cool and all. Um, I did terrible the first semester. The second semester, I was on academic probation and then I left the school. I feel like if I hadn't left the school and I actually, but the thing is, I did. My major my freshman year was sports management, so I think I probably explained this in my other one in my other vlogs. But my major my freshman year was sports management. That's why I always say it's good to know, it's good to have an idea of what you think you will want to major in and what your career job might be. My career job is like ten different things. Well, it it was I mean two different areas, but it was something always with sports. It was physical therapy. Um, at one point it was athletic training. At one point it was sport uh, sports management a coach or whatever it was something with sports and then once I got I wasn't you know I left after my freshman year at the school I'm at right now I left and I went to Buffalo State College but I couldn't as you had to go into a transfer you had to choose biology or something so when I'm doing biology no I think I actually chose to do biology because I wanted to see if I was science <laughs> I did terrible I did very, 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 very terrible. I failed out. I failed out. 
and I, my grandmother was passing away so I my head I wasn't in the right headspace that year because just in October in October of 2018 I think it was yep October of 2018 my grandmother was fine and then next thing November came she was in she was in a nursing home I think it was a yep she was in a nursing home we brought her home because she wanted to be home for Thanksgiving and then from then on all the way to something happened and she passed away December 31st that all happened within two months and I was away at school well when I not even December because the last the the what you call it the semester ended like December something my job was eight hours or nine hours away from the city but I spoke to my grandma like December 4th, December 5th. She was fine. She was able to talk. Like, she just had a little, like, she couldn't remember what she had eat, you know, what she had for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. She couldn't remember any of those things. But then once I came home, a uh, turn, like, uh, something turned. And she passed away um, Christmas Eve. Not Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve. And stuff like that. I did bad my, I did bad the, that summer, the, Fall and spring semester when I was at Buffalo, um, I didn't go back to school for a period of time and stuff like that. So the whole, um, I got out of school May. So June, July, August, September, October, November, December, I was working and then the pandemic happened. Well, the pandemic happened right after January, 2020. And then, you know, I was working. I was working. And then I decided to come back to school. And like I said, like you gotta be in the right headspace. I feel like that and that, that's what I'm like having a teenager mentality and going straight into college, you don't know what the what the hell is going on. Like it works for some people. But I feel like only when those certain people have resources. I mean, they might not have the resources, but the headspace is different. The headspace I think I was in, I just wasn't ready for college at that time. Now, I could do the work. My mind just wasn't focusing. But once I came back to school during the pandemic, I was able to focus straight forward. And I went straight through three years, got my degree in psychology, and y'all know I'm here now. I don't even know if, if that's where I left off at, where I, what point I was trying to make. I think I'm just yapping. I'm tired. I need a nap. It's 1.25. I feel like if I go to sleep now and I wake up at 2.25, I'd be fine. But then I don't want to be up all night. And I need to get this stuff done before I go see that lady tomorrow. I just hope that. But I'm trying to figure out what was wrong with the emails. Why, like, why the emails keep bouncing back? That's that's weird to me. I'm going to have to email the other lady and be like, you know what? I've been trying to send her the, um, the timesheets and stuff, and I'm not able to send it to her. Would you be able to send it to her? I'd be having, um, and, you know, CC me and let her know that, that I've been trying to email her. And it's been bouncing back. Like, Oh uh, no, but I'm finna take a nap. I'm tired. I can't do it. I I'll talk to y'all when I get when I wake up or something. Bye. Right, so I just went to 7 Eleven. I got the essentials. So now I'm about to finish the rest of this um work and this binder. And then I'm gonna put on a scary movie. And then yeah, I'm gonna get to it. Hopefully I'm gonna be done by eleven o'clock so I can go to sleep on time. Because tomorrow is Tuesday and I got to go to the elementary school to do the therapy session with the two students. I'm going to have to show y'all what I'm going to be doing. So this right here is, um, these are basically different, three different examples of kids with different um, mental health issues. And these are the um, symptoms and you got to figure out what mental health issue that they have based on the system, the symptoms. So this one is ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. This one is oppositional defiant disorder. Um, and this one is major depressive disorder. So now what I'm gonna do is use these three examples 
And I hope that I'm right. As I told y'all that I've been sending the lady emails and the emails have been bouncing back. This is an example on goal setting progress. So I'm going to assume that three these three examples that I did right here. Out for delivery. Oh shit, it's coming early. Sorry, I ordered my mom some stuff from um, Walmart. Um, goal setting. So those three examples right here, I'm gonna assume. Cause this right here is an example, right? Hold on, I get the pages. So this is one, this is two, and this is, oh. Uh, so that's basically, it's basically just two. Oh, so basically three. So basically three, and I'm supposed to, you know, plug that in there. It's supposed to be my examples and stuff, and then the individual plan right there. So I'm gonna get this done. Hopefully it's right, because I gotta turn this all in tomorrow. This has to be done by tomorrow. Turn it all in, and we're gonna go over it. Hopefully it's right. Wish me luck. I don't have to be to the school until three o'clock, so maybe, because I have to call her before I go, call her in the morning before I go, and then I'll, yeah. All right, bye. I love when I find new shows that start up slow, and I be like, you know what, I'm not gonna watch it, and then the second episode comes, and I be like, you know what, it's time to pick up. Apple TV got the best movies if y'all need some movies to watch watch the servant truth be told that's what i got so far and then this new show is called disclaimer it's two episodes in i think there's another episode after this it's october 14th they probably come out every wednesday so the episode's probably coming out this week but what i got from the little description of what the show is about. Basically, this lady, she's a journalist, a very, like, a very popular journalist in England. It is. And she's married, right? Um, and there was this old couple. So it goes back, back and forth, back in time and stuff like that. So it goes from her son to her being married and then to this older couple it's all taking place around the same time but then it goes back and forth in the time so she's married and she had an affair with this um this boy who who passed away but then his parents who are who were married his mother died um the they you know they got older and then the mother died but his name, the one that, the boy that died name is Jonathan. So his parents, I think the boy's mother was also a writer. She was also a writer. Um, so I believe that there was some, you know, some things surrounding how he died and all the other stuff. Because I'm pretty sure that he was with the journalist who her name is Catherine. He was with her. Um, while she passed away, while she passed away, while he died, and stuff like that, and then because she was already a popular a popular journalist and married, I'm tr I'm trying to figure out what her husband does for work. He might be a popular somebody and stuff, and there might be that type of couple where they can make things go away and stuff. So it must have been some issues surrounding how the son died. So I think the the boy that died, Jonathan, his mother wrote a book basically about what was going on between her son Jonathan and the lady the journalist Catherine so they wrote them like I said like I think during the time that the son has passed away the mother was going inside the room and writing his books around and what she think would happen describing Catherine and all this other stuff and then but the mother died and the book was finished so the boy Jonathan his father decided to publish the book and mailed the book to Catherine to let him know, to let her know that the secret 
was still out there. The secret was still out there and that he wrote the secret. What? That she tried to keep in the book. And he sent her the book. So now, this, I forgot, I think his name, I forgot the father's name. No, his name is Steven. His name is Steven. They holding a grudge against Catherine. Obviously he is. Because his son died. We're going to get to a how. When it gets to how, I'm going to come back. But, so now he's trying to, all that hate that he, that, they, that he grew inside his body from the moment his son died. And he probably didn't have no questions or he had questions. And she refused to answer. So now he's going to try to ruin her life and what she has accomplished because of what happened. Because it might have, he might have passed away and they might have think she had something to do with the way he passed and didn't say nothing and just let it, you know. And they think that he, she probably killed him or her husband killed him. And that's probably not the problem, the situation at all, but we will never know until we get to the episode, which is I'm excited about. They got Strawberry Shortcake reenacting Cinderella. Yeah, but I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm actually excited now. Um, but yeah, but at this point right now, so I'm guessing. And then the boy Jonathan, he was like a photographer. He was coming into. So I'm pretty sure at that moment, Captain, she had already had her money already. And so that we don't go into details yet. But she already had her son, Nick Hub. So she has a son named Nicholas, right? So in the scene that just passed, the old, the, the, the Jonathan's father, Stefan, went to where Nicholas worked. And was asking him questions and, you know, um, addresses and stuff. And, um, oh, he probably got that thing sent to where that, where, jo not Jonathan, Nicholas' father. Nicholas' father name is Robert, and Robert is married to Catherine. So he probably went to pretend as if he was sending something home, but instead sending it to where... Nicholas' father, Robert, works. Um, so on the camera that Jonathan was using around the time he passed and, you know, his photography um, camera, while he was having an affair, he would take pictures of Captain while she was naked and all this other stuff. And none of the stuff is removed off the camera. All his things stayed. So Jonathan's father, Stefan, took all the pictures that... Jonathan took of Catherine while she was naked, printed them out, got the um address, and he's going to mail it to Robert's office. So ultimately, he's going to break up a marriage. And now, Nicholas, he like, I don't, I don't even know what happened or how, because in the clip that it showed when Jonathan first met Catherine, he met Nicholas at the same time, who was four and stuff damn that means she had jonathan around her son too she really didn't give a fuck about that marriage that is insane having a son nigga around the kid and holding his hand wow but i don't know what happened between a relationship between nicholas and Catherine, but it's obviously straining it in the thing in a disclaimer description it showed that he was a like a drug drug addict addicted to drugs or something like that and now he's finally she's they finally got him to move out the house and all that other stuff this is what's in the first and the second episode but um as i said i'm pretty sure jonathan's father Stefan is going to try to break up because i'm pretty sure Robert doesn't know what really, really happened between Jonathan and Catherine. And he's going to find out now. Probably kept something, you know, some things get told and some things don't. He's going to find out some more information. Nicholas is at this age and he's a, he's a grown adult. He will find out. It was like, and then he's going to realize Jonathan the guy you said was a, a nanny or whatever so he was around you were sleeping with him 
I thought he would probably be like an assistant to you. Like he's going to remember. But it's like. Or he probably seen what happened. And he starts self-medicating with drugs. <laughs> I can't remember. I'm excited. I'm still doing this work. But let me go and finish the rest of the episode. And at the end of the episode, I'm going to see if there's another episode. And if there's another episode, I'm going to watch it. And I'm going to come back and tell you a little update. Clock that tea. Peace out. Now it's unfolding. Before Jonathan's mother passed away, she wrote a letter and sent it to Catherine. But in the letter, she wrote that her husband, Jonathan's dad, passed away. That was a lie. So I'm thinking that she wanted to meet with Catherine, but the father kept telling her no. So she, or was some type of threatening. I'm going to assume that for right now. It doesn't show that. But she finally had to sit down with her and she said to her, do you ever think of me? Because I think of you. And mind you, years has passed since Jonathan died. And she now mentions and say, you didn't send flowers. You didn't even bother to come to my son's funeral. So you was having an affair with this boy. Regardless if you was married or not, you knew this person. You had an intimate relationship with this person. And you didn't show up to their funeral when they passed away. That's suspicious. Red flag number one. Well, red flag number one was having an affair and you were married with a child. Red flag number two was never coming to the funeral when you knew this person. You could have just been like, y'all were friends. And then the mother just said that the police asked you if you knew my son and you said you never met him before. Red flag number three. Because why are you lying? You have That's the number one thing you don't do. If there's an investigation and you've had an affair, they're going to find out. And if they find out and you lied and told them that you did not know this person when in fact you did and you was having an affair, you're the number one suspect in that murder of that person. Because now it becomes, um, what's that? Um, it could be either you killed him because he was going to tell your husband. What is it? Fatal affair, I think it's called. You killed him because he was going to tell your husband that y'all was having an affair. Or your husband found out that you were cheating, confronted you about it, and said that, not even confronted you, confronted him about it, a fight happened, and he killed him and told you to keep your mouth shut. Or he confronted you about it, and you said it was going to stop, and the affair kept going, and he was like, I had enough of this, and killed him. <laughs> wow. Watching this in real time. I need to start doing that. If I knew how to stream, I would stream the episodes. I would stream and watch the episodes at the same time if I get what I'm trying to say. I don't know. I don't want to become no... Mm, that's too much live. I would go live and stream while watching the episodes so y'all can see my action in real time. That actually sounds fun. So y'all can see how that shit unfolds on my face like... <gasps> Wow, I knew it. You know how many shows and shit I watch? I promise you, like, when I, not even this year, I haven't been watching as many shows. But last year, I promise you, it was like 10 shows. It was like five shows a day that I was watching. And I could keep up um, and remember the plot of every story. I was watching 911 on Mondays, 911, the regular 911, Lone Star, Tuesdays. What came on on Tuesdays? Something came on on Tuesdays, I forgot. Wednesdays was, um, what was Wednesdays? There was a, a more of those there was a lot of shit, especially shows on Netflix. There were like three or four shows that was new on Netflix. Um, random shows on Paramount TV Plus. So it was Linus, um, Tulsa King, um, Mayor's Kingstown, um, Three or four show, a uh, school spirit. That's four right there. All on Paramount Plus that I was watching, and those all came out on a Sunday. 
those all came out on a Sunday. So imagine watching all of those shows, plus all the shows on NBC, ABC, Law and Order. Like, it was literally, my mind was just, but that's a good thing. That's good. That's actually a good thing. That's cognitive skills, so like, words that's going through your mind every day. Because imagine just sitting in a room or, you know, there's people that sit in a room that don't watch TV, that just don't do nothing. And after a certain um, while, you start losing all of that. You know how these people start losing? You know what I'm trying to say. You know what the fuck I'm trying to say. But, yeah. I love watching all of these shows. Psychological thrillers and all this other stuff. <laughs> but let me go ahead and continue. It's only 17 minutes in. It's getting good. All right, all right. I promise I'm going to go. I'm going to go. And then I'm doing this discussion. And it's due tomorrow, too. Usually, I do my discussions the same day. I usually do it the day it drops, so I won't have to do this. I got to do this one and another one. Got to make sure the computer not dying. And then I'm still doing this. There's one more left right there. I'm about to eat some more cookies. Once I'm finished with this stuff, I'm gonna find another movie to watch. And I'm gonna eat my ice cream. I'm gonna eat that whole thing. I'm so glad I'm not lactose intolerant. I would be very upset if I was. Cause I do like ice cream, but I don't eat ice cream all the time. But I, And I only eat chocolate ice cream. Whenever I get a taste for ice cream is when I go get it. <gasps> Maybe I could eat a croissant. That's gonna be my breakfast. No, it's not. I don't fucking know. I'm gonna wake up early. I gotta be at school by a certain time so I can get breakfast. Not breakfast. Lunch. I'm trying to figure out if I wanna eat lunch on campus or if I wanna take it to go. Tomorrow's Tuesday. I'm just glad that I'm gonna be back on campus on Wednesday so I can get my fried chicken. And I'm gonna get my to go tray. And I'm gonna go take it to the office and sit there and eat instead of eating in the cafe with the rest of the students because there'd be too many fucking people in there. Let me go ahead before I get too carried away with this talking. And then I'm going to try to upload this footage by tonight. Yeah. Alright, bye. Okay, so I finished the episode and... The husband got the pictures. Jonathan's father, Stephen, hand-delivered the pictures to where Catherine's husband, Robert Works... He's seen the pictures. He was supposed to be home for dinner with Catherine, but didn't show up. He went straight to Nicholas to question him because, first of all, Nicholas is in one of the pictures on one of the beach that Robert used to take them to. So he went out to eat. He, he First of all, he didn't even go out to eat to want to sit and talk with Nick just to catch up. He went there because he seen him in the picture and he was like, maybe he remembers something. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to interrogate him about what he remembered. I'm sure Nick remembers. That's why he became a, an addict. Okay, I'm not going to say that. That sounds crazy. I'm sure Nick remembers, but he's trying his hardest to not give up information for his mother, even though he doesn't really have a connection with his mother like how he did when he was younger. But um, the father was like, screw her. Who is she to judge? Now knowing what she was doing on all those business trips that she was claiming and going to and all that other stuff. So he finally got home with the pictures sitting there and he showed them all to Catherine. And she's like, who sent you those? Girl, bitch, who the fuck else? Ain't nobody else in that family alive but the father. Like, you should think in cap. Turn the brain on. Turn it on. Um, but yeah. Jonathan's father definitely did step one. Infiltrating the marriage. Mind you, Robert just found out. This is the first time he's found it out years later. You know, 25 years. 25 years later, he found out that his wife was having an affair. And now he's finding out. First of all. Nick could possibly be the age that Jonathan was when she was having an affair with him. I wonder if she was in her, maybe he was a teenager. Well, that means Nicholas is way older than that. But, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, what? I can't wait for episode three. 
I just can't wait for the episode when they actually show what happened that caused the death of Jonathan because it was said that in the um uh, when the the you know when the mother Jonathan's mom was having because she died of terminal cancer and stuff she said that my son died saving your son so I'm get oh I think I did say that to y'all I'm guessing Jonathan was on a trip where he wasn't supposed to be some an accident happened and Nicholas was there but then it's and then, but then it don't make any sense because I don't think the father made Robert made that connection yet he was the one who saved he was the one who died saving Nicholas I want to know what what that what what type of accident what that was either they was on a boat he almost drowned something something I need to know like ASAP. This is the only thing I do not like about Apple TV because they post all the episodes weekly instead of just posting them all. They post it weekly. You know what else show I'm waiting for to come back that I didn't mention to y'all that I watch on Apple TV that y'all should watch? The Morning Show. It got three seasons. I'm waiting for the fourth season to come out. It was good. It started coming out during the pandemic and then they stopped. And then season, I mean, season two came out 2021. That's when, because it was kind of like the same concept of, you know, when Fox News and the movie Bombshells came out with the guy who owned Fox was sexually assaulting women and stuff like that. And basically, you know, the environment was hostile. He was getting away with saying things or making women do stuff if they wanted to get hired in their jobs and all that other stuff. That's how the show started off. And, you know. A lot of people had relations with him um, and stuff like that. They didn't realize that. They didn't realize they was under the spell of him, of his charismatic ways, and it was actually be assaulted, you know. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but, yeah, that's what the morning show started as. And then um, season three, well, the ending of season two, so it takes place. It also takes place with the things going on in real events. Reese Witherspoon, Legally Blonde, she's in that show along with... Um, Jennifer Aniston from Friends, my, uh, Rachel, um, her character, I'm just going to tell y'all a little bit of it, but her character, um, her family was like religious and all this other stuff. She has a brother who's con basically con conservative and it showed basically the people when they stormed the Capitol. So this is all taking place still 2021 during, uh, you know, when Biden and, you know, Kamala became president. And then, you know, Trump just couldn't deal with the fact that he lost the election. So he was trying to say that they um, stole it from him when actually you, you lost. You, he still can't come to terms with saying that he lost. Even J.D. Vance still can't come to terms with saying that Trump lost. They're very stupid. But, yeah. And um, Reese Witherspoon, she plays a journalist and stuff. So... She went to the Capitol to, you know, she said, basically Anderson Cooper. They go to where the stuff is at to, to see and be in the midst of it so they could see how it feels, you know, to get that hardcore footage. And she was there, like, getting footage from people storming the Capitol and all that other stuff. And her, she found out her brother, her brother had attacked a cop. She, well, she, uh, somebody had attacked the cop and she seen him and recognized him and realized it was her brother. But she go, she, she caught it on footage and stuff and she was one of the many people, you know, recording this stuff. So it's like, how you go and you barely get any footage and they found out that her brother was there but she erased the footage and somebody found out that she erased the footage and, and it's basically everybody who was at the Capitol, you know, got arrested, federal prison, because that's a federal crime. The fuck is you storming the Capitol for? Like, you storming the Capitol literally to go harm people because you're mad about an election that y'all was rightfully not going to win. But anyway, yeah, she almost got in trouble for doing that and stuff. And somebody was finna tell on her because she deleted the footage. I think her girlfriend, her girlfriend was going to say something and she broke up with the girlfriend. And, and it was only because her brother was this, he was a recovering drug addict who purposely put her in situations because he knew she had the money and the people around her to make it go away. He purposely put her in those situations. Purposely. He purposely did that. And I'm just like, your brother is a hater. And he's, and the thing is, he kept doing it because he was mad 
at her because their father was drunk driving and killed somebody and she called the cops and said her dad had killed somebody in the hit and run. So he always had that. But then their mother was some type of religious freak that they used to make them do stuff and all this other stuff. And they, and they like, very, the mother was also religious but conservative as well, racist, all that type of stuff. If the, and, and you know, you could see in the show that they, the two had, two siblings had different paths. He was home with the mother, but he couldn't really deal with it. And it was causing him to, you know, self-medicate and all the other stuff. But she always was taking her money and putting him in rehab. And he was always not staying in rehab, you know. He's an addict. He'll be sober, you know, relapse, be sober, relapse. Just spending, you know. The money is always being spent. He's not doing what he's supposed to be doing. And, you know, she, that's her only sibling. So she really, but then it's like she's trying to set boundaries. He's like, I can't let him, I can't keep letting him in my life like this if he's not going to really get himself together. And the capital was the last straw. And it's like, you putting me, I have to delete this footage. And you telling me I need to do it because you have family. You knew you had a family and you still chose to go storm the capital. You knew your wife was pregnant. And you chose to go storm the Capitol knowing that she wouldn't approve of you doing that because she's not a conservative like you are. Stoop? Like, dumb? Or no? I just see something stupid on Twitter. That just, they on Twitter, black men asking for a child support forgiveness loan. And I'm going to stop it right there. Because you hear how that sound? They want a child support forgiveness loan instead of just taking care of their fucking kids. If you will take care of your kids, you won't be on child support. And why are you so mad about being on child support? You still got to spend money supporting the child that you brought into this world. Did you not? Do you not? You don't want to give $500 a month. Okay, cool. Let's put it on. Let's put you on child support where you can only give. First of all, how much you make that is going to be determined by them people on how much you're going to give for the child support. If you got a good paying job, why why you wouldn't mind why wouldn't you mind giving $600 a month without child support? But then you don't want to pay that, so you got to go to the court. And you got to now pay $800 a month when you could have just settled for $500. Stupid, bro. That goes into the point. Never mind. I ain't even going to say no more. Child support forgiveness loan is crazy. Them niggas is stupid. And that's exactly why. That's exactly why. They got no, 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 what is it? No thoughts, just vibes. Not even no vibes, just no thoughts. Just you, I, if you knock your head, echo. If you knock, you have echo. They so, I'ma go. Good morning, everybody. It's the next morning. It's 9.23. I'm finna eat my um, breakfast burrito, drink my protein shake, and yeah. <gasps> I'm tired. I didn't go to sleep till three something in the morning. I'm gonna see. Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> what? Somebody said, Why y'all ain't tell me you get banned at the Atlanta Zoo for beating on your chest in front of the gorillas? This somebody said they should have thrown your ass in there with them since you want to be a tough guy behind the glass. <laughs> Yo, somebody said you was auditioning or applying to work or something. That's mad funny. Mm. You know what's... You know what's weird is when you see famous people in relationships and then you can tell they're not together and then they post, they drop a, um, 
basically a what is it they just let people they drop something and let people know they're not together why first of all why are we in Victoria Monet? Look, what the f Why are we in Victoria Monet's business like that? Yeah, trying to figure out why her and her baby daddy broke up. I know, all I know is that the girl that he was previously with and they was engaged, I know she laughing. <laughs> because I know she <laughs> They get back a motherfucker, ain't it? But you don't know why they broke up. Maybe they just grew apart. Y'all. New York is on the run right now. You got the New York Yankees and the New York Mets in the playoffs. You got the New York... Hmm. You got New York Liberty WNBA basketball team in the finals. I'm actually excited for New York because we ain't had shit since the Giants won their last Super Bowl. And I don't even know, 2008? Whatever year Eli was on the team. Well, he was on the team the last two um, Super Bowls, the Giants won. But, like, I think Eli won two Super Bowls. I know one of them he played against Tom Brady. He beat the, um, they beat the, um, what you call it? Whatever, in the New England Patriots. And then, I don't know who, who they played the other game. But I'm very excited for New York. My lips are white as hell. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to end this vlog right here. What day is it? Tuesday. I have a floor meeting today at 8 o'clock. Yo. Why nobody email anymore? They got the RD living in this building. And she's emailing. Not even emailing us. Texting us every time there's like a volleyball game. Ma'am, I don't care about the volleyball game. I already told you when you see me and you ask me why I'm not going to the volleyball game because I don't want to. So why would you? And then you're not even spelling my name right. And I clearly showed you how to spell my name. What's wrong with doing mass emails? Everybody that's in this building should be in the email. Y'all should. Draft up the email every single time y'all gotta say something. I was close to blocking her. I was close to blocking her. I mean, we didn't have an RD last year. We didn't know. We basically had an RD last year. But like, we didn't have no floor meetings and stuff like that. Because it's too many, it's because it's a lot of freshmen and majority of these people is in this building. And it's most, it's like every fucking sports team in this building. Now all of a sudden we got to have an RD, we got to have a RA, we got to do room inspections. And we got to have floor meetings. I just hope this floor meeting is, you know, quick because, like, I mean, I'm pretty sure they're going to have a floor meeting because I'm st the stupid ass basketball team want to have parties. First of all, why would you even have, throw a party in your room? And invite all these people. Like, nigga, you don't. And I want to be like, when you, like, you don't, you don't sound, you don't think that's stupid that you, you're telling me that? Like, you got all these people and then it was so many people that they carried out into the hallway. I think he be lying. I think he be lying just to get friends. Because, and then now people come in and then people don't like each other and they about to fight. And then you got a DJ. Like, why the fuck do you have a DJ in your small ass room? The room is this big. I mean, there's different layouts, but this is how much space it is. 
And then there's one bed right here and one bed over there and a couch and stuff. So it's like the DJ, all them fucking people. Like he did show me a video. She did show me a video. So I can't say he was lying. But like, why would you have all those people and then making all that noise and they're confused when they do a noise complaint? Why, this is why we can never have nothing nice. But anyway, I'm going to end this vlog here. Mm. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm about to eat this breakfast, but we don't drink this protein shake and say how it looks stupid until it's time for me to go to campus to get lunch.